and gave names to all the animals in the beginning, a long time ago. He saw an animal that liked to growl, big furry paws, and he liked to howl. Great big furry back and furry hair. I think I'll call it a bear. Man gave names to all the animals in the beginning. In the beginning, man gave names to all the animals in the beginning. A long time ago, he saw an animal up on the hill. Chewing up so much grass until she was filled. He saw milk coming out, but he didn't know how. He said, "I think I'll call it a cow." Man gave names to all the animals in the beginning. In the beginning. Saw an animal that liked to snort. Horns on his head and they weren't too short. And it looked like there was nothing that he couldn't pull. He said, "I, I think I'll call it a bull." Man gave names to all the animals in the beginning. In the beginning. To all the animals in the beginning, a long time ago, I saw an animal leaving a muddy trail, a real dirty face and a curly tail. He wasn't too small, he wasn't too big. He said, "I, I think I'll call it a pig." To all the animals in the beginning, in the beginning, man gave names to all the animals in the beginning, a long time ago. The next animal that he did meet had wool on his back and hooves on his feet. Eating grass on a mountainside so steep. He said, "I'm gonna call that one a sheep." Man gave names to all the animals in the beginning. In the beginning, man gave names to all the animals in the beginning. A long time ago. An animal as smooth as glass, slithering his way through the grass. He saw him disappear by a tree near a lake. Ah. Bob Dylan song. Bob Dylan went through a, a Christian phase. He did three three albums where he was writing sort of Christian praise hymn music. And that was on the first one called Man Gave Names to All the Animals. And that's not Bob Dylan singing. That was Jason Mraz, I think. Yeah. But it's a fun idea. This idea that shows up in the Bible that man or humans gave names to all the animals. I think it's a great story, but I don't know if it's exactly totally true. Because we haven't even found all the animals yet. They're discovering new species of fish and mammals and especially insects and worms all the time. So we can keep naming and naming and naming. And when we name it, that's the beginning of understanding something about the animal, maybe studying the animal. When we name the animals in our lives, I think that's an act of love. Kind of just like what we did for Joshua this morning. You guys already gave him a name. 
But, but his name got said out loud, sort of officially in front of all these people. And we said, hi, Joshua. And we welcomed him. And we gave him a blessing. Because that's part of how we love. That's how we love, is we, we, we name. It's much easier to love a person if you know their name, and it helps with the loving work of loving an animal if you, if you have a name for them. Even stuffies get names. Did, did you name your stuffy yet? You didn't pick a name for him yet? You've had him since Easter. Keep, keep working on it. That's okay. That's all right. So... Years and 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 years ago, back in the 1200s, like eight or 900 years ago, there was this guy named Francis who lived near a town in Italy called Assisi, Francis of Assisi. And in churches where they make a big deal out of saints, like the Roman Catholic Church and the Anglican Church, they call him Saint Francis. And he did a lot of wonderful things. And he was just this guy who had so much of God's love inside of him, Francis loved every person, every creature, every living thing. He loved the whole earth. He was so in love with everything God made, he didn't even need to go to church because outside was his church. And all the creatures, he called them brother and sister. He loved all the animals. There's one story about Francis. He's walking from from one town to another with a bunch of his... well. His companions, who were, who were brother monks, walking with the brothers, walking along, and he sees a flock of birds hanging out in a tree, and he goes over to the birds, and he preaches a sermon. Like some, some sermons are for the birds, right? But he basically talked to sister and brother birds and said, you should always praise God who loves you, who made you, who gave you feathers to wear, wings to fly, and whatever you need comes from God. God made you noble amongst all the creatures to give you the air to fly through. And even though you don't plant things or harvest crops, there's always enough food for you. So he he talked to the birds. There's another story about this guy, Francis. He'd be walking along a country path, and if it had been raining, you know how sometimes when it rains, worms come up out of the ground? Ever see that? Well, worms sometimes do that. So Francis, he'd be walking along, but he would not step on a worm, so he'd pick up the worms and move them off the path. I don't know whether he gave sermons to the worms, but but he he moved them out of the way. There's another story about this guy, Francis. He was um, was in this town, and people in the town were scared all the time because there was a big wild wolf that lived on the outskirts of town, and the wolf would hop over the wall around the town or sneak into town and scare the kids and sometimes scare the dogs and chase after things because the wolf was always hungry. So when Francis came to this town, he says, so how are things going? What do you need? What's the thing you need the most help with? And they said, we have a problem with this wolf. So Francis, he decided to go out and talk to the wolf. You can tell this is a story, right? Right? So he goes out, he goes, he goes out the, the town gate, passes the town wall, out into the woods around the town, finds the wolf, and he says, so what's the deal? What's going on? And he could see that the wolf was hungry. And the story says he said a prayer, and he asked God to bless the wolf, and the wolf stopped growling and followed him into town. So he says, well, we've got to make some kind of deal. So he got into town and he was talking to the mayor of the town and the townspeople and he said, so the problem is your wolf wolf is hungry. So if you'll promise to feed the wolf, we'll get the wolf to promise to stop bothering you. And somehow, Francis was sure the wolf said yes. I don't know how that happened, but it's a a good story. And for the rest of that wolf's life, the the people of that town provided food and drink for the wolf. And in the town of Gubbio in Italy, there's still a statue to the wolf. It's kind of cool. I haven't seen it, but I've seen it on the internet. And if it's on the internet, it must be true. So when we name things or bless them, that's an act of love. This morning, this morning, we had this wonderful opportunity to, to hear Joshua's name and put the water on his forehead and bless him. And oh my, he knows he's loved. And we have lots of extra friends here this morning People brought 
their animals. People brought pictures of animals. People have memories of their animals. So we're going to take time a little later in the service to bless the animals. But first we're going to sing All Creatures of Our God and King. <laughs> 